This is the War Room Roundtable podcast, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant businessmen and women on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they've learned on the road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their successes into your life and business. The War Room Roundtable is brought to you by your hosts, Jason Miller, CEO of Strategic Advisor Board, and Philip Llanos, CEO of Own the Rhythm, and former podcast host for Entrepreneur and Inc. Magazine. Welcome to the War Room. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Dean, it is not often we get to talk to somebody who keeps it as straightforward as you do, uh, no frills. And uh, I already like the tone this is going because people, people listen to this show often to look to see if they can find an insight or a matter of fact, if they can just learn from the story, you know, and it seems like you've lived a lot. So Jason and I are happy to have you here. Welcome to the show. Well, Philip, I'm honored to be a guest here with you and Jason and have lived a lot and learned a lot and just looking forward to a great discussion. And you know, Jason, the backdrop there with the war room brings back some great memories from my days serving the Army. Yeah. So looking forward to a fantastic discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it is real, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's not a, well, not a fake you know, backdrop. <laughs> I'm all about authenticity, and that's the that's name right. of our brand. So we're starting <laughs> off on the right foot here, Jason. There you go. <laughs> so my my question to you, Dean, is as it, to kick things off, do you yourself come from a family of entrepreneurs? I do not. And Philip is a great question because it's interesting leaving the Army. West Point was my undergrad. Then I went to flight school, learned how to fly helicopters, then went to the Army Special Forces Ranger School and spent seven years active duty. And when I got out of the army, I couldn't even spell entrepreneur. I had no <laughs> idea what that world is about. And it's interesting how we're oftentimes a product of our environment. You know, I had an amazing mom and dad growing up and my dad was a 30 year engineer for Alcoa, just a great fortune 500 company. And most of our neighbors, you know, work for big companies. So when I got out of the army in 2000, you know, what did, what did I think I was gonna do? Well, work for a big company. I mean, that's the world that I grew up in. So, you know, it couldn't even spell entrepreneur right back then. So it's interesting now to be, you know, all in with an entrepreneur type mindset. Yeah. Now, when, when you decided to go all in on the path of entrepreneurship, was there any one thing in particular that you can attribute to making that decision to fully commit to it? Absolutely. There's two things. One, just the overall motivation. And I'll highlight that because after leaving the Army, I mentioned working for a big company. So worked for an amazing company, Procter & Gamble. You know, worked on brands like Crest and Tide and also worked at Mars. Brands like M&Ms and Snickers and their pet food division. And they're both world-class marketing and branding companies. And I'm so thankful for the experience there, Philip. But P&G is a massive $80 billion company. And when I went from P&G to Mars, it was half the size, but still a $40 billion company. And I have this insatiable desire to know that I'm making a difference. And I had fairly big jobs and it was very well paid. But what I realized at one point is if you pull me out, the next guy steps right up, the machine keeps going, and it doesn't even skip a beat. And I really struggled with, am I truly making a difference if I'm that replaceable? And that was really the motivation that said, you know what, there's got to be something more. I mean, the money was great, the stability, the impact and everything, but there's got to be more. And that was really, Philip, that motivation that said, I better learn how to spell entrepreneur and then, you know, really have, could not have enjoyed the journey the last 10 years more than what I'm living right now. Yeah, no, I, I love the way you broke that down. Uh, the self-awareness that you exhibited is a key trait that and pattern that you see in entrepreneurs where they have this moment of becoming extremely present uh, in, in their circumstances and saying, wow, uh, is, is there more that I'm capable of? I believe so. And answering that in that fashion. And so is uh, authentically American Vision the first company that you started from that moment, or was there something else? It is not. And back to the joke about not even being able to spell entrepreneur, 
when the motivation came out to say, okay, I want to try something different. I want to be a business owner. So I didn't think I really had it in me, you know, to start from a blank sheet of paper. And that's where Authentically American started in 2017 was a blank sheet of paper. So my first entry into the entrepreneur world was buying my first business in 2012. And Jason, this is one that will relate to you because it was a government contractor. Mm -hmm. And we had contracts that produced dress uniforms for the military. So the old army dress trousers that you and I used to wear, Jason, you know, that was one of our contracts. So we produced thousands of uniforms every week for Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. So that was my first experience, Philip, buying a business. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I've heard great things about buying a business as opposed to launching one in terms of uh, getting cash flow immediately available, things of that nature. Do you do you find looking back on it, uh, the difference between them being better or worse for starting from scratch, bootstrapping as opposed to buying a business? Well, I'll tell you where, where this starts to come in perspective. So I tell everybody I'm a veteran and I'm an entrepreneur. And my priorities in life in line with God, family, and country. And I think God had a plan on the journey that we're going on because Authentically American is a veteran-owned, American-made premium apparel brand. But that never would have happened unless I would have bought that business in 2012 because that gave me exposure to the apparel industry. And Jason, you did it for 24 years. I did it for seven years. I didn't even think about apparel because I wore a uniform every day. So that really wasn't top of mind. But it was such phenomenal experience for five years to learn, you know, the history and they have an understanding of the apparel industry. And authentically American, again, amazing product, but it's all American made. And here's a shocking statistic that I discovered. When I graduated from West Point in 93, over 50% of the apparel was made in the US today, it's less than three. Wow. That's all that's made here in the U.S., 3%. And, you know, fast forward to now, that shocking statistic gave birth to our tagline, where is yours made? Hey, Jason. Hey, Philip. Great looking shirt. Where is yours made? And most people are like, well, I have no idea. And then they will look at the tag and be shocked to see made in China, made in Vietnam. And the last five years, especially the last two, being in the middle of COVID, have been incredibly difficult. But I will tell you now more than ever, you know, our brand really resonates with a specific segment of our population. And people want American made. People really want to know the country of origin and they want amazing product. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. You were looking for impact and... Uh... You are now part of the three percent in existence that's actually contributing to American manufacturing. That's a uh, that's a hell of a leap from from being part of a giant machine to becoming that. How do you feel about that? It's been scary, <laughs> and I'm exhausted, <laughs> Philip. And you know, back to the Ranger School experience because I didn't know it back then. And Jason, I'm sure you can relate to this, but Ranger School was such great training for leading a startup. And a lot of the listeners may not be as familiar about Ranger School. And I'll give a quick highlight because there's a lot of military doctrine and tactics, but at its core, you know, Ranger School is a leadership school. And what they do is deprive you of everything you think you need to survive, namely food and sleep, and then put you in incredibly stressful situations. So on day one, there were 340 of us. And if you make it straight through in 72 days, you live on one meal a day and two to three hours sleep a night. And then they just put an incredible immense amount of stress on you. And after those 72 days, we lost over 80% of our class and there were only 70 of us left standing on graduation day. Only 70 of us. And back then it was all about no sleep and incredible stress. And that's the life I'm living now. <laughs> Re revisited, right? <laughs> that's right. The good thing hey, is, so Jason, I get to eat. Yeah, I mean, no more right. MREs and no more one meal a day. I make sure yeah, I right. get the, three the, square meals a day. The days of the mermaids are all over, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here, it's interesting though that you're in that space because I don't know if you remember the whole Black Beret debacle. Do you remember uh, that? Absolutely. The, the first ones that. Mm -hmm. Philip, just so you know the background. So the, the military went 
into a transition time where they mm-hmm. they took away the patrol cap, right? Yeah. And they they gave everybody a black beret. Well, the first round of black berets that was issued to every U.S. soldier, U.S. soldier, they were made in China. There was a tag that said "Made in China" on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the 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 day we got them, we'd all shaped them and formed them and did all that stuff. And the next day or week or whatever it was, they're like, "Everybody's got to turn them in." <laughs> And we turned all those berets in to get made in the USA berets. So, cool. and gosh, you, you might've been part of making them. Who knows? <laughs> we weren't back then, but you know, that spirit, Jason, you know, from those that are like our brand that celebrate patriotism, that believe in the American worker. I mean, you want something that is American made. Yeah. And we found Philip, nobody buys from our brand just because we're American made, just because we're veteran owned. You know, first and foremost for us is delivering an amazing product experience. But when you do have an amazing product experience, that's when you look at the tag. And then when you see Made in USA. There, there's, a, there's a conversation that I think uh, is an important one. And, and, and that you're, you're right. You know, we live in an incredibly advanced technological age where a lot of things are automated. A lot of things are outsourced. And there's a time and a place for all of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then... It's, it's hard to argue uh, manufacturing uh, everything in, in the U.S. Uh, but the, some things are nice to have that are specifically made here. But what have been your thoughts? Because I imagine being in the industry of knowing that you're part of the 3%, how do, what are your views on the way things currently are in the, in the industry as a whole, uh, whether it's uh, you know creating and manufacturing products in the U.S.? versus a business in general and how it operates in the U.S. I, I know it's very broad and vague, but I'm sure you have some immediate thoughts on it that it just carried with you as a philosophy for business. Oh, absolutely, Philip. And if you or any one of the audience went to our website and looked at our mission, you know, it talks about creating American jobs. And that's really the heart of our mission is all about creating American jobs. And that's why we've made the intentional choice that everything we produced is made here in the U.S. because what we believe ultimately is that you can vote with your wallet. And I've had people say, well, I can only vote every four years on what's most important to me. And I've got a different philosophy that you literally can vote each and every day on what's most important to you. And one of the things I joke and say, I love about the apparel industry and being in that business, unless you live in a nudist colony, I mean, we can literally touch everybody. I mean, literally... Every day, Philip, when you get up, what do you do? You make a choice. I mean, what shirt are you going to put on your back? What pair of pants? So, you know, every day you can make a choice on what is important to you and what's important to you and your values. And that's what we're really promoting. And when it's apparel, of course, we want to choose authentically American. But anytime you're shopping, when it's feasible, and sometimes it's just not feasible. Technology is a big one. But whenever it's feasible, we want everyone to vote with their wallet. Yeah. Now, uh, that being said, you are now officially established. You've got a strong foundation, right? You're doing things of that nature. But what are your goals moving forward? Do you have a, a clear idea beyond obviously keeping the, the lights on and then and the business <laughs> running? Is there a clear objective that you're trying to achieve? So the one word to describe that is all about growth. And it, it's fantastic being here on July 13th, because our official anniversary as a brand is July 14th. So we'll celebrate five years this month in July. And I tell everybody, first and foremost, I'm so thankful that we survived. Because it has been anything but easy the last five years, especially the last two. And I tell everybody, if you're a technology company, it's relatively easy to work remote. It's relatively easy to work virtual. But we've got 11 factories across the U.S. Everyone loves our T-shirts. We make those at a factory in Texas. And you don't make T-shirts virtually. I mean, it's in person with real American workers making product. Another one of our popular products are socks. We've got amazing socks that people love because they're so soft and comfortable. We make those at another factory in North Carolina. So 11 states across the U.S., And the last two years in COVID just reinforced my belief in the American worker because 
they were all operating at some level of reduced capacity, each and one of our contracted manufacturing facilities, but they stepped up in a big, big way over the last two years and continue to produce amazing American-made product for us. Wow. It's, it's interesting. I saw, and this is something for both of you, actually, because, uh, because I, I believe that both of you have uh, this tenure. Uh, I saw someone post, uh, one of the tech guys post uh, that right now there are so many people who are keyboard workers or there's like they're only in tech and they don't seem to understand like the the rough brick and motor business the the Mm -hmm. the nuts and bolts of bootstrapping and uh and then what they do is they actually and there's nothing wrong with that but a lot of them will outsource like 90 percent of what they're doing and there's again there's a time and a place for things like that but they, they say because of the work ethic so it's not even you know cost of labor but the work ethic the sheer work ethic of other places versus what they've seen uh, Americans who want to work from home, want to work less. It's a, I don't get an opportunity to ask all the time, but I feel like given the, the, the pair, the combination here of this conversation, some thoughts on that, uh, work ethic, how people view their teams, things of that nature is a perfect opportunity and a missed opportunity if I don't ask, given the philosophy and the kind of work that you do. So here's my perspective, Philip, and this is an intentional choice we made because when needed, we provide everyone the flexibility to work remote if they've got to be home with family, if they've got somebody that's sick, and we accommodate that. But we've made a very distinctive choice that we want to have an in-person work environment and culture, and that's so important to us. There is a time and a place for working remote and virtually, but that's a choice we made because it's important to us for everyone to be there in person and build that culture, especially as a new brand. And I'll give you an example where this came up is we recently hired a new account manager because we have two sides of our business. So we have a B2C consumer side of our business. So that includes things that are authentically American branded, that are collegiate licenses. Like I'm wearing one of our dress chambray shirts for West Point. We also have Alabama. We've got Naval Academy. So 12 schools, and that's all of the online side. But 75% of our business is B2B clients. So We work with Fortune 500 companies, middle markets, small businesses. So we have clients like a Pepsi or Bridgestone. We have big veteran charities like a Wounded Warrior and Team Red, White, and Blue. So we have a client sales team. And when we were posting for hiring a new account manager, the number one question I got from across the country was, well, can I work remote? Can I work virtually? Because we've got customers spread out all across the country. And we talked about as a team and we said, you know what, when people are saying, oh, absolutely, we'll allow you to work remote, you know, we went a little different direction because culture is so important to us. And we want to have that culture where we support each other, we have each other's back. And the way you really make that happen, the best way possible is when we're all together in person. Yeah, it it can't be. It's not a decision you make lightly. Uh, Yeah. But uh, then again, you're also running a business that it's like a 3%, you know, <laughs> it's not necessarily like your whole, the whole theme here is you're not doing what everybody else has done. In fact, you're making, you're making a very clear decision to go against the grain uh, in, in, in the name of just business and, and under your vision of what business should be, can be, and, and is going to be for you. Uh, so that, that's really interesting. I want to turn the conversation over to Jason. I know I've been hogging up the air time here, but I'm sure he's got some thoughts and some questions. Well, I think on that topic, right? Leadership is huge, right? So leadership is everything. We can talk about the great resignation, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? But but at the end of the day, if you find the right people that have the right buy-in, they love what you do, they're vested in what you do, all these different things, none of that matters anymore. And then it's just leadership, right? It's leadership and really pulling people into where they really buy into what what is the mission and vision of the company. I mean, you you can go on tons of company websites and not even find that anymore, right? (laughs) Nowhere. So now I'm a prospective employee and I'm researching you and I don't even know what that looks like for you, right? So it's like some of it is... It's, it's top driven. It's, it's C-suite driven. It is, you know, finding the right people 
to put on the right seats on the bus, right? Mm -hmm. And all this talk about great resignation and all this stuff, it's a, it's a news cycle topic that um, does it exist? Yes. But you just got to find the right people that will be invested in your mission and the vision of your company. And there you go. There you have it. You'll have people that are loyal um, and they want to work and they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves, period. Great point, That's Jason. And, and yeah. I'll tell you no, something that yeah. I made a lot of mistakes early on in our five-year journey is we tried to be all things, all people. Mm. And for example, on that B2B client side, anytime there was a new opportunity that came up, you know, we would chase it and I'm, you know, easily distracted. So we were chasing everything and we really got nowhere. And we have really ratcheted down that focus because Philip, you asked long-term vision, what we want to do. I mean, the ultimate go big or go home vision, vision for us is we want to build this iconic American brand. And I used to work on brands like Crest and Tide and M&M. So we want to build this iconic billion dollar brand. And that seems daunting. It seems massive. But what we've realized, we don't have to be all things, all people, because the total apparel spend every year in the U.S. is 300 billion, 300 billion. So if you do the quick math, that's one third of one percent market share. So we don't need a shotgun blast. We we don't even need, you know, a rifle. I mean, it is just a fine tuned laser beam. And what we found, for example, is veteran owned businesses veteran operated businesses, veteran focused charities, they really resonate with who we are and what our brand's all about. And having that level of focus has made all the difference in the world. Just in the last six months, you know, we now have Wounded Warrior who's a client. We have Team Red, White, and Blue, and both of those are both massive veteran charities. We also now have Pepsi as a client. We have Bridgestone, we have Procter & Gamble, we have HCA, so all these Fortune 100 companies. And it's not the entire company, but they have these veteran employee resource groups, these veteran ERGs. And at these big companies, that's thousands of employees. So we got wind of that and understood how to go ahead and make an opportunity to partner with them. So here it is within these big companies, you know, thousands of employees that we're now serving. And that all became all about focus. I love it. I love it. With, with that said, uh, if you could go back back to the ranger training uh, and you had a chance to just visit yourself on that a lot knowing what you know now about business and and life in general what would you say to yourself uh just before the training started and obviously it wasn't some pretty days but what would you say to yourself knowing what you know now suck it up buttercup (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there's been jason a lot of sucking it up and you know i, I talked a lot about the, the ranger school piece and you know you know tongue in cheek how no sleep and incredible stress and i have lived that and here's what i would share the piece that you can't lose sight of and fortunately i've got a great lifetime partner my wife kelly we've been married 27 years and we've got four amazing kids we have two daughters 24 and 21 we have an 18 year old son and we have a 12 year old son we adopted from ethiopia so we have an African-American child. So God and family are incredibly important to me. And literally, I could work 24-7. But, you know, I've made a commitment to my wife. I've made a commitment to my kids that every night, no matter what's going on, unless I'm traveling, I'm home by, for dinner by 6 or 6.30. And sometimes it's dinner. Sometimes it's taking the kids to sports. Sometimes it's coaching. And it's not easy, you know, to keep that balance. And Jason, this is when I joked about, okay, there's no sleep because, you know, there's times I'll get up at two, three, four in the morning and that happens pretty much every day, but it's all about keeping those priorities because if we ultimately deliver on this vision and we build this incredible brand and authentically American, and it's as recognized as a Nike or a Polo, but I no longer have a family, I'm divorced and estranged from my kids. I mean, nothing matters. So that's the advice is, you know, never lose sight of what's most important in your life. I love that. Brilliant answer. Brilliant. Answer. Be- beautifully said, my friend. Beautifully said. Thank you. Yeah. It's not often that uh, people get to hear the the raw and the real about 
your own personal commitments to what you determine to be your priority. And those values, they do so much for business. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, they, they run the business as a, as a, as a background operator, right? Uh, so many implications from that. But it, like, as Jason said so aptly, it is beautiful that you made those choices. And because of that, the consequences, yeah, you get up early sometimes to get ahead of the day. <laughs> but, uh, but you know what? You also get to sit down and, and have dinner with your family and hear all about what they're up to. And uh, I can think of nothing better than for all business owners who have families to sit there and go, yeah, I, uh, I need to spend more time with my family or to go. Yeah. I, that's what I love about what I do is the freedom for that. So thank you for that reminder and that wisdom. Uh, with that said, uh, I want to turn over to the grand finale question. Uh, we mentioned yeah. earlier. Let, let, me ask, let me ask one request, Philip, because I just thought of one thing that we haven't touched on. And if we get yeah. Two minutes. Uh, I was going to do a, a quick, you know, show and tell, quick demo of one of our products. Yeah, because okay, we're, okay. we're very intentional <laughs> about you know leading with an amazing product experience. So, you know, we're in the apparel business, and the most ubiquitous apparel item is what you're wearing, Jason. It's the T-shirt. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, we'll fill up what you're wearing is the T-shirt. Oh yeah. So this is one of our collegiate licensed T-shirts. So Jason, probably one of your favorites as well. So go <laughs> on. Go Army. <laughs> and I love that we can see each other, but I wish you guys were here in person because if you could feel this, you'd be like, Dean, that has got to be the softest T-shirt I've ever felt. And that's by design because who doesn't love? And I see you nodding, Philip. Who doesn't love a nice soft T-shirt? The other yeah. piece I want to highlight is the print. You know, think a lot of the T-shirts in your closet. They have that heavy plastisol ink and on a hot summer day. You know, it will stick to your chest. You wash it a few times, it will crack. <laughs> and we very intentionally use a soft hand water-based ink because we want our shirts, the fabric, the print to include tagless to be incredibly soft. But Jason, this is one, if you think back to your army days and PT, I think will resonate with you. And <laughs> Philip, I, Philip, I think will resonate with you. So we have this new innovation, you know, this new technology, the sweat activated print innovation. So when you sweat, magically this hidden message appears. So I'm going to spray the shirt and watch what happens. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and there on the back, I'm spraying it. So, you know, for anyone that's listening, so beat Navy. You know, and it on the front is go oh, Army awesome. and then beat Navy appears. That's hilarious. And I love this to see your shares? reaction because, oh, <laughs> Philip, I will literally have people say, Dean, no offense. I don't care where it's made. The shirt's just incredibly soft. I can't feel the print, but how in the world did you get Beat Navy to appear? But when you have, you know, an experience like you guys went like, awesome, that's incredible, amazing. Then what happens is you want to learn more. And then you will look at the tag and see the brand Authentically American. You'll see Made in USA and back to that 3% number you'll realize that nothing in your closet is American made. And then you'll go to our website and learn the value and the stories and ethos behind our brand. But you don't get to that point unless you have that wow type experience. And it doesn't matter whether it's a t-shirt like this, a chambray dress shirt I'm wearing. You know, the last time we were on national TV, you know, these fun patriotic socks, you know, it's a mix, mix match stars and stripes. They were the number one seller, but I wanted to highlight, and I didn't mention that clear enough before, you know, veteran-owned, American-made, very important to us, but it's all about an amazing product experience. I got to have one of those, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy, Jason, that can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I know a guy you now that can hook yeah. me up with that. That's and Jason, amazing. What's been fun is, you know, we have ones like this. Alabama is one of our licenses, so we have uh -huh. one side. But what's been even more enjoyable is our clients, you know, whether you're a business, charity, CrossFit gym, they have some of the most creative ideas. So they work with my team and then whatever you want printed, whatever you want magically to appear. So it has just been phenomenal to watch these different designs come to life. I can only imagine CrossFit has it so that when uh, it's, it starts to be visible, it says, oh, I can, I, I can, I can, I can go home. I can almost go home. I can, until it gets to the bottom, I can go home now, you know, something along those <laughs> lines. I could easily see that 
being a, a, a creative choice, uh, but what a cool technology. And yeah. thank you for sharing that. That was also for anyone watching, uh, anyone in uh, consumer uh, gross products, like that was also a masterclass in how you present your products. You know, you have to have an experience with your product. How do people mm -hmm. experience it? And you essentially have taken the time to really look at how people wear fabrics. Like, uh, yeah, I'm wearing a t-shirt today, right? It's comfortable, but you're right. If I were to look at the tag, I, I don't know. It might be made in Bangladesh, actually, you know, uh, to add to the number of uh, places that this is made from. Uh, yeah. So I do like the idea of what you're talking about, the quality, the integrity behind your company. The in Everything is, as Seth Godin would say, the story adds up. And uh, for me, there's just something powerful about the way you've decided to run your business. And it's very it's done very much on purpose. And uh, it doesn't get any better than that in business. So with that said, coming back to what we were talking about, uh, let's roll out the grand finale. If that's okay, I'll check in with Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. do it. All yeah. right, right on. So uh, with that said, I'm wondering, Dean, if you could have invited anybody to this conversation today. I mean, anybody at any, any point in time in the world, dead or alive, who would you have loved to have invited today to join the conversation and why? So this really relates back to priorities. And I said, I'm a veteran and entrepreneur and my priorities in life align with God, family and country. And I start every day off the same way. And that's on my knees in prayer because I need God's provision. I need God's guidance and wisdom. So, you know, I am a Christian and Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So if we could pop a fourth window on here, that's who would be there <laughs> is Jesus. Right on. No, I get it. And mm -hmm. I, I can see someone is purpose driven uh, as you are with the way you do things. It, it would make sense to have that as part of your life. And I, and I really respect that you would hear to, to your vision and your values the way that you do. We could all learn from that. It's a great reminder for anybody who's mm -hmm. been teetering and tottering on what they're doing to really take hold of what they value. Uh, coming back to your story about waking up so early. If you say that's what's important to you, you yeah. mean it. You know, <laughs> how to live like you really mean it, how to run your right. business like you really mean it. That's what this conversation has been about. So thank you for that, Dean. It's been an absolute pleasure. Those are my closing thoughts. Like you said, Philip, this was going to be a great discussion. And as advertised, it delivered. I mean, this was a phenomenal discussion. So thank you both. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Jason, please close us out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always like to say, you know, we have 168 hours in a week and you took 30, 40 minutes to spend here with us. Um, you know, we can replace cars, money, all these things, but time is not something we can uh, replace. So it means a lot to us. We hope our audience really enjoys this segment and gets something from it, which if you didn't, you were just asleep. Um, so <laughs> lots of things in there, tons of takeaways there. So uh, again, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Always love having a fellow brother or sister at arms um, on the war room. And uh, that means a lot to me. Thank you guys. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the War Room Roundtable with your hosts, Jason Miller and Philip Lanos. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates. And always remember, if you can dream it and believe it, then you can go achieve it. We'll see you in the next episode.